Hi people! Right, so today, well this evening, I'm going to be setting up the Crossfire Micro and I'm going to be setting that up onto my drone, which, let's get this up. So I'm going to be setting it up on this drone, this nice little thing here, and I've got my uh, Crossfire as well here. And all of that is going to be going on the Jumper T16. So first things first, I've made a start and getting a bunch of documentation up. So for that, so yeah, this is what we're installing today. So first, just to make a start on it, I've got the TPS Crossfire manual, just to make sure I've got a good idea of what I'm going to be doing in this. And I've also got the manual for the Crossfire Nano receiver as well. So I'm pretty surprised by how small the Nano receiver is. So if I just show you it on camera, right, just look how small that is. Because at the minute I'm currently running X4R on my drone. And I also got the special edition as well, so I could get the nicer antenna. So I think the first thing I need to do is have a look at installing the Crossfire module on my T16. So in the pack I've got the mod for the FreeSky QX7. Yeah, hi Tom. Yeah, I've got the Nano SE, so it came with that nice antenna. So I'll just get this open. So luckily I'm not running FreeSky, not running FreeSky QX7, so I don't really need this mod. But it's nice to know that they actually ship it with ship it with the uh, module. So let's get this open as well. Alright. So before I put it in there, the first thing I probably want to do is actually update the software on it before I get ahead of myself. So nice thing is, is it comes with a USB port and I've cheated a bit as a part of setting up this stream. I've already downloaded the software for this. So the software is the TPS agent. So I'm hoping that if I plug this in, we should just pick it up. Let's see what happens. Ooh, nice. Got a nice glow to it as well. Just from plugging it in. Let's come up on my screen. It's running 242. It's like Windows is happy with it too. So firmware, let's double check if there's any updates. Alright, there's quite a few updates. So yeah, current is too far too. Alright, let's update to 328 and see what happens. Hopefully you can hear my Windows desktop sounds as well. Let's just uh, turn them off a bit too. So that's going to bootloader mode. Oh, it's updated. That's surprisingly quick actually. Well, I thought it updated. I guess it was just downloading the firmware. That's a bit confusing seeing the uh, progress bar going back and forth like that. Alright, now I'm getting the impression that that is actually done. 
Yep, same. That is fine. Let's have a look on the configure tab. So I can bind from here, which is pretty nice. I'll keep my region as open for now because I've heard from watching one of Joshua Bardwell's videos is if you set this it will lock it to that so if you want to get out of doing that you have to perform some type of emergency procedure um, now in the UK we should be at 25 milliwatts so I'll be a good boy for now I'll just turn dynamic power off we shall be also be on 868 I'm not sure what that's about, but I'll play about with that later. Oh, my VTX. wonder what that is. I'll read the manual for that in a bit. But I remember watching something else about Bardwell saying that on the uh, receiver you could set up a few of the extra pins. So, let me have a look at that. So, I remember mentioned something about these pins on the side if you'd run out of ports for your smart audio for example uh, run out of UARTs you could actually use these pins instead and you'd be able to control smart audio or I'm not sure if you can do tramp IRC as well, I'm guessing you can but that's a pretty cool feature alright so, set a fail safe. I don't know. Alright, so I'm hoping that is flashed now and that's all good, so I should just be able to stick it inside my T16. So, let me just double check the chat. <laughs> 250 all the way, yeah. So every time you update your micro TX, it auto updates the RX. To... Oh, cool. So it does all the error updates then. That's going to make life so much easier rather than using Smart Part on Free Sky. Alright, so let's exit out of this. Switch back to my T16. So I've removed the protector that comes with it. So I've got the T16 Pro. Um, and I got it for a really good price as well. It's like, cost me 90 quid and it barely been used. An absolutely amazing deal. All right. So what I probably want to do is, so at the minute I've currently got my current profile on here which covers so I'm using an X4R receiver on my existing quad and I'm just doing this type of telemetry so I've got alerts set up for my average battery cell voltage and a few things like that so I'll probably need to redo that when I come to it so first thing I'll do is plug this in before I activate the external module I'll also stick the antenna on it too It's not actually clicked in. Is the JL base normally a bit tight on the T16. Right, I'll screw that in. nice that doesn't it all right so I've got my antenna on now and let's have a look at these scripts so starting to focus there there we go so I know there are some Lewis scripts already on here so I'm currently on I'm already running open I'm already running open TX 
2.3.6. So it's a relatively recent update because I only did it last month when I got this receipt when I got this radio. So that should be good for now. Alright, so I want to be on that one. And so we've got crossfire configure. Alright, so I'm guessing I need to activate crossfire on my model. So let's have a look at that as well. So what I'm wondering now is I might just duplicate this model. Yeah. I've got quite a few models there. So I've got my Modular 7 model. Yeah, that's what I'm about to do. Um, turn, yeah, turn the internal module off and turn the external C CRSF. So yeah, I'll just duplicate that. And we'll rename it. Yeah. No, it's not that one. There we go. And we will call that CSRF. Oh, no, that's CSS in there. B, C, D. <laughs> I'm joking. So I want to turn my internal module off. That is now off. External RF. And that's the one. And my channel range is set up there. Yep, and that's powered on in the back now. So now let's go through to that setup script. Oh. Yay! Very nice one. So I've got all my settings here that I had in the Windows program before. I've also got all the version numbers, so that seems to have worked. That's pretty cool. So I don't need to put this in bind mode yet. The first thing I need to do is actually get the receiver onto my uh, quad. But that is ready to do later. So for now, I'll just turn that off. So I've already taken, I've started taking my, the top frame off my quad. So this is a Mamba Stack version one. So, and I've also got a Matic Mini VTX on top of it as well. So I've already taken the uh, VTX antenna out, which is just a lollipop. And it seems to work all right. Um, it can run up to 800 milliwatts. Um, but to be fair, it's not as great as I've seen other VTXs, although it might be to do with my goggles as well. So if I just grab my goggles, I'll show you the way I've got it set up. So I've got the Fat Shark, I think it's the uh, HD3s, and I've got a uh, the lollipop on one side, and I've also got the patch on the other, and it's a uh, diversity re diversity receiver as well. So it'll that means it'll just always pick the best one, depending on the signal strength. Hi, Chris. Welcome to what could potentially be interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I tried going out flying the other day, just uh, kind of just a local field as a part of my uh, once a day exercise, and I managed to nick the antenna, which is a bit frustrating, and it just dropped my range completely. So I just felt it was a nice opportunity to try a crossfire. So let's just take that out. So 
So yeah, I kind of jerry rigged it a bit once I'd nicked the other antenna, and I just taped the other one up top with it instead. It probably wasn't the best thing to do, but I was out in the field. So let's get those cable ties off. So I'm currently running this X4R free sky receiver in F part with the F part firmware. And annoyingly, they didn't do any further updates to the F part firmware, which means you can't use the Betaflight Lua scripts. So, what the Betaflight Lua scripts allow you to do is they allow you to change your VTX channel, your PIDs, and your other tuning variables all from your transmitter rather than have to mess about with your OSD. So, I can either cut the cable tie, but I'm long cable ties. Just gonna cut it. So gonna have to focus. So I'm focus. That's a bit better. Let's take one of those off. What I've also done is I've repurposed from the IKEA smart light holders because they've got built in magnets. So, annoyingly, this screw in my frame isn't magnetic, but the other ones are. So, rather than spending however much it is for one of those magnetic bulbs, you can just use like the IKEA smart remote holders. But everything on this stack is nylon now. They're always very fiddly, these screws. So that is my VTX. So just move that out of the way for now. All we need to take off is these three. So yeah, I've just got my receiver wired up to these here. So I will just tap those with the soldering iron. So I've got the trusty TS100, which is actually a pretty decent soldering iron. Uh, what time are you thinking for the game of quad, Chris? Yeah, that's heating up now. It does go straight to 400, so I've not flashed any other firmware onto this yet. Because I've just not seen the need to. It works pretty well stock. Let's just unscrew them as well so I don't end up melting them. Tin the soldering iron a bit. Make it easy. There we go. It's negative. That's power. This is effort. So I'm going to need, so I don't think I'll be able to use RX1 and TX1 because that will be inverted. 
actually, I believe it is. Actually, no, it isn't, because I've had to do the uh, not to use F port on the. <laughs> Hi, Robert. But yeah, in order to. Uh, so, he interferes every time I touch, this, touch the iron. Is it bad enough that you can't hear me? We get to do this, so to use F port on the X4R, it's like a. Uh, just below this, uh, what component is that? Is that a transistor? Just like a pin off it, and that gets to the in uninverted signal for our smart port. So, should be good to use RX1 and TX1, but I will double check the uh, Mambo stack manual before I do that. So, what I'll do next is solder this. Working out which way it needs to go on. So we've got the uh... so we've got the uh, antenna connector there. So we'll put solder on those pins instead. So I've not got any uh, solder input here or anything like that. So I just don't hold it on top of the. Prior warning, I am no expert at soldering. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about the blue tack. It's gone forever that now. Buy a new one. The blue tack would be nicer. Side pin, ground, 5 volts, channel 1, channel 2. Side pin. Alright, thanks a lot. So, so that is ground, 5 volts, channel 1, channel 2, like that. So I can either do this through hole. Just double check. Let's just put this on the stack for a sec. Oh, I can just dab it straight onto the pad. Oh, cool! Comes with a nice little heat shrink as well. It's pretty nice, though, isn't it? See this? Oh, it's nylon wire. I don't like nylon wire. It just melts and reveals all, doesn't it? So I'm going to be placing this, I need to work out how much I'm going to place it. So the way I was thinking of mounting the antenna, let's work out placement for a sec. It's either under here like this so it'd be coming out these sides like that and that would have no problem getting through to the receiver then or I can do a bit more work and potentially get something 3D printed later that would mount it on top but only problem with that is if I crash it will probably break. So I feel like mounting it underneath with a cable tie, maybe a bit a bit of electrical tape will do the job on that. But yeah, we'll do that to begin with. Let's just move that out of the way. Alright, 
Alright, and sorry for the additional interference, now I'm picking up the solar iron again. I need like one of those wire brushes instead, would be a bit nicer. But I'm not at Lee Works at the minute, and there we've got all the usual tools for that. We'll just dub that on. Press that one. I've got some of you are cringing now that. This isn't actually being held down properly. I'll just do it in this one. I really do need some blue tongue down as well. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. No matter how you mount it, the internal will get chewed. job. It's probably a bit too much solder on the channel one part. So we can get it off. Oh, that should be alright. So I'll just show you how that's turned out. I'll just uh, get ready to focus the camera. Come on, focus. There we go. So I've got a bit of solder on it now. It's probably just enough just to tap the wires on. There we go. So you saw where I originally had my X4R mounted, so it was here like that. So what I'm thinking of doing, so it's going to be heat shrinking it anyway, just cable tight to the bottom. Just cable tight it down here, like that. But my only problem is we've not got any cable ties big enough to do that. Go on, what are we seeing? Oh, hi Alex. Yeah, R9 for the win. <laughs> I was waiting for the R9 comments. So can you have a cable tie like that? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. What I could do with doing is <laughs> maybe getting some foam tape or something like that just to hold it in place that'll probably be a bit nicer won't it if we've got any foam tape what I'll do is I will be right back while I look for some foam tape
back. So I've got some of this stuff. So it's not, it's like a very thin form to it. So see how well it works. And I'm being bad and doing everything with my Leatherman. But it does the job. All my tools are elsewhere at the minute. So discard that. <laughs> How big does that need to be? Not very. I should probably clean this a bit first, but uh, YOLO. <laughs> Your lot is the attitude. So I'm thinking that is going to mount the like that. Of course, it'll have the plastic heat shrink around it when it does. some wires on it. So that is going. Let's take the checks off again. I'm going to use R1 and TX1, but well, before I do, let me just double check that that's going to be correct. So let's have a look for... Come on, keyboard. Let's, let's go in and search. Yay, Windows! <laughs> I'm catching something else here. Oh, something else seems to be caught on the keyboard right now. One sec, my keyboard receiver's playing up. Yay, 2.4! System is playing up right now. So all the wires that they overlap the receiver and the heat shrink so they don't rip the parts off. So all the wires. Alright, yeah, that's a good idea. So you've kind of got some built in tension then. Alright, something is currently being held down on my laptop. Just trying to work out what key it is. Control is being held down. I'm not sure why. Well, I didn't. Have, I didn't expect to have to debug system errors or my own laptop's errors while I was on stream. So uh, give it a sec.
No, what is making it hold the control key? It's not Solder Knight, is it? Interfering with 2.4. Right, guys, I will be right back while I debug this. Uh, I didn't expect this to happen, but yeah, right back. All right, guys, I'm back. So sorry about that. I was an absolute numpty. So I've currently got my other keyboard plugged in over there, which I use as my gaming setup, and I had my goggles case resting on the control key. But yeah, that's been sorted now. So to continue where we left off. So to continue where we left off, let's have a look at the Dito Mamba stack documentation. Let this work correctly. Stack F405 and we've got the version 1. It's not the Mark II but I can get to the documentation from here. One spot. So it is this one, I believe. It's not the mini, it's just the V1. So we've got two versions we've got that one and that one. Interestingly, RX1 does say S buzz, but I'm not sure if it's inverted or not. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Let's just solder onto it, and if I can't use it, I'll just switch to another pin instead. 
Oh yeah, I'll have a quick PR Facebook message, Tom. So I'll just switch back to this. I'll just get that solder and I plug back in. Alright, I see what you're doing. So I'll just switch to my desktop. Just to make sure. So yeah, I'll just switch to the window. So Tom's giving me an example. So that is solder it from there and loop it around, I'm guessing. Is that what you mean? So it's got some tension against the board or something like that? Ah. Oh. So it would be Oh cool, thanks for that information Rob. So solder it that way and loop it around is that what you mean so kind of loop it around like that but not cause any inter any interference all right cool yeah it's sounds like a no-brainer to be here to be honest so what I'll do is just remind myself of the schematic and that is this. Stop scrolling. There we go. So for the ground pin that is going to be Round five volts, channel one, channel two. Awesome. Or oh, no looping. All right. So let's get ground on. Switch back to table. There we go. Looks like it's come pre-tinned as well, that's pretty nice. So I'll just solder it as is for now and I will trim it down when I work out how far away it's going to be from my flight controller. Just get this easy back up again. And it does that, set it to 350. We got 350 yet. There we go. Alright, so I'll give it a tiny bit of a tin. And I think my sponge has gone dry already. Yeah, it comes with this little soldering stand that I've been using. Just go out of the way for a sec. Alright, just moistening up the sponge for the soldering iron. Let's get small amounts on. So our first one that I'm looking at is ground on that side. 
inside the bind pen. Let's bring a bit more light in just so we can see a bit better. some blue tap don't I? Let's get this lined up. What I could do again is grabbing the helping hands from the office. So helping hands are like some nice type of a uh, clamps that you can get that stand up off the desk and you can position them to hold various circuit boards in various ways so it makes it easier to get out things it's a bit junk at the minute Try again. Like it's on, but I'm not happy with it. Just can tell I am no expert with soldering. Probably would help if I had the right tools. I don't want this getting too hot either. Right, that looks like it is on. Yeah, I've not got any tweezers. One sec. Easier if I've got it a bit closer to me. I can't check messages on Facebook at the minute but I can hear it pinging and the reason that is is this camera here is actually my phone and the way I've done that in case you're interested is I'll just go back to my desktop for a second I've got this piece of software here that allows me to use Android as a built-in webcam it's actually pretty handy this done. I'm just keep making it worse.
Right, now I've done it. Awesome. So next one is going to be 5 volt. See if the leather man can help with this because I do not have any tweezers. Nah, it's gonna be too small though. Feels pretty on. And then the next one is going to be channel one and channel two. That one was a bit easier actually. And then the last one, which is channel 2. Right, and they are on. Now we have got just uh, shift that up a bit. So now that is on there. Let's bring that light up a bit. So I'm going to use the camera as well to see how the joints are. That didn't look alright. Like not 100% but I think we'll do. We'll see how we go from there. So the next step is get this on the flight controller. So we need, let's double check the documentation and see what this module is rated for. I'm guessing it's going to be 5 volts. Let's grab the keyboard. So yeah, 5 volt import. Ground five ball in nice one. All right, cool. So switch back over to the table. Actually, would be interesting. Can I zoom this in?
Cool. What was that? Very cool. So let's work out how long these wires are going to be. What we'll probably do, just to give them a bit of slack, is take them past the flight controller a bit. Yeah, probably to the other side of the flight controller, about there. Just cut this much off. Not yeah, about that much. For a sec. So I also need to reveal some wire on that. Still a bit long. Hi, Jerry. Thanks for joining. So, yeah, for the new people that have just shown up, what I've done is I managed to get the Crossfire module set up on my T16, which is back of this. It's my T16 here. Uh, I've just spent way too long soldering these pads because I'm a perfectionist and at the same time I'm not good at soldering. <laughs> and I'm about to stick this onto the pads over here. So the nice thing about that is we've got ground 5 volt RX1 and TX1 there. So what was that pin order again? I know you can reassign the channels I believe. Let's just double check. Oh yeah, thanks. Um, if you want to see a video of me building this quad, I did it on the LeeWorks YouTube channel. So what I'll do is I'll just grab the URL for that and just throw it in YouTube chat. So it's a pretty long video, but I have put timestamps in the description. Yeah, yeah, leave a comment below. Let's check on now. There we are. Yeah, if you want to see this quad being built, that's the video where I did it. So, I think these actually might be a silicon wire, which is nice. So I should just be able to strip them with my fingernails. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Twist that, do the next one, so channel 2 goes to TX and channel 1 goes to RX, alright yeah thanks for that Tom.
<laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've just seen your message in chat. And the last wire. So let's just tin that to each of those wires. So what I normally do for that, just do it that one underneath. But yeah, uh, to get to get started to get into drones jury, um, I'd recommend watching a lot of videos by Joshua Bardwell, uh, Rotor Raya, Mr. Steel, UAV Futures. They're all brilliant YouTube channels. And there's more than enough information to get you started on that. And also look for a local community as well. So in Manchester, we've got Manchester FPV. We've also got Rochdale FPV. And uh, we've also got Sail Drone Racing as well. But I've not actually been there yet. I would like to go. So Sail Drone Racing. I believe it's, uh, it's like a warehouse. And they've got various tracks and they put various events on. But I would like to find out more about that. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tom. Have a good night. Just turn each of them. Too much solder on that. Always happens, doesn't it? Why oh, is it closed down completely now? That's a shame. Is that because of COVID nineteen or uh, are they just closed down completely? Ah, cool. Alright, those are all the wires tinned. So, what we'll do. Yeah, it's my solder, the soldering iron is affecting my mic. Uh, yeah, it's whenever it gets too close to my microphone. So ground is going to go to the... I'll just add a bit more onto those pads. I'll just double check to see if it needs it. These pads are a bit bigger so it's going to be easier to get these on. Let's 
get up there more on the sun. So. It is on, but not. It's perfect to the one, so. Alright, let's ground. Yeah, this soldering iron is the TS-100. Um, it's served me well so far. So, I use it and also my housemate Alex uses it as well. So, he also runs Lee Works with me. So, Lee Works is kind of a, well, yeah, it's like a maker space. But it's also a co-working space at the same time. Because we kind of saw a gap in the market where we have people that wanted to be able to do product prototyping. Also have a nice co-working space where they could actually take clients as well for meetings. What's going on with that drawing? Do that. I can't see it very well. It's my top, there it is. One. There we go. Yeah, I just have to redo that then. Yeah, thanks for coming, jury. so far though I did start the, the stream 20 minutes early as well with the be right back so about an hour in Right, that's the 5 volt on. And now we've got channel 1 and channel 2. So, channel 1 is the inner one. Channel 1 goes to RX. TX Oh, the light has just fallen. You said that's just come disconnected. Yeah, we're back now. Nice one. So, the 
this camera out for a sec. But it's currently running in the background and that's why it's so slow. There we go, it's quick again. This one. TX, this remaining one. Come on, get that solder flowing. There we go. Nope, that is not it. Alright, let's have a look at that with the camera, and if it looks good, we will turn it on. Zoom out. So, that is what I've just done. Make sure they're all separate, but there's no bridging from the look of it. It's not the best soldering job, but we'll see what happens. Ooh. Got this antenna as well. I prefer power it on plugging the antenna because the antenna transmits and receives for telemetry data. So if you've not actually got any resistance on it, you can potentially pop it. And we don't want to pop it. I have got a spare one, but I don't want to end up wasting 30 quid. Alright. Let's grab a smoke stopper. Be right back. I am back. I'm back with a smoke stopper and what the smoke stopper does is it tries to stop smoke but there's no guarantee. And before I power everything on I know my VTX normally starts up at a higher wattage so we don't want to burn that out either. And thanks for Alex for reminding me about that. So that's that. Let me just uh, put the solder in for a sec. 
smoke stopper. Smoke stopper. Power. This one as well. And let's go to our scripts so we can bind. Just want to see that this powers on properly. Alright, should be back now. that's going back there we go right awesome so what I was doing before I got interrupted by uh, Virgin Media is uh, I think the last thing you saw me do was plug this in so that worked successfully and what I also did is I managed to get into the settings of my radio and put it in bind mode and the nice thing about this receiver is if it realizes that it's not actually got a radio already connected what it will do is it will just automatically go in binding mode so when I put my radio in bind and managed to bind successfully then it asked me if I wanted to update so I updated it and then that took about two minutes to do the update but yeah uh, we're looking pretty good on that so I believe the next thing I need to do now is so now in my Crossfire in my Crossfire setup, I can now configure my receiver and do that remotely. Oh, and I just realised this is a bit out of focus. There we go. So yeah, I'll just go back over that quickly. So yeah, everything bound successfully. It says binding OK. Then showing up there on 868 because we're in Europe and currently on 25 milliwatt. So I'll go back to receiver. That is on a channel dynamic. I'm not sure how many channels I need. Um, I'm just trying to remind myself what I've got set. So I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I need twelve, but I could probably tidy that up. But for that, for now, I'll just do twelve. Alright, dynamic. What does that mean? Alright, cool. Keep it dynamic for now. Failsafe mode, cut. I'll see by Mavlink, not 100% sure what that is. So output 1 is set to TX, output 2 is set to RX. So that means channel 1, which is the inner one, should be going to RX which it is and the other one should be going to TX which it is awesome but channel 3 which is on the other side channel 4 if I want to do smart audio which is pretty cool to be fair what else can I do with that okay that's cool so just keep that as is for now and I also want to work out what I'm going to do for my uh, link quality for how I want to display that on my OSD so I will probably output that on one of these channels here so I can actually get that in my in my goggles but for now let's get that connected to beta flight and get everything configured so 
So I'll switch to desktop. Oh, I need to actually while I'm here, let's rediscover my sensors. Could be a good start. All these are now wrong. <laughs> Delete all sensors. Yep. Discover new sensors. It's a good sign. Cool. Alright, stop discovery for now. And we will go to beta flight. Yeah, that's the one. And we will plug it in, plug it in. Wow, wow. <laughs> Do you remember that advert? Alright, beta flight. Call 3, connect. Oh, that's a bit out of whack. But I'll leave that for now. First things first is RX1, well UART1 is going to be serial, I can leave everything else. Configuration is now going to be Crossfire, got telemetry turned on, save and reboot that. And you hear the beautiful reboot, reboot sound. All right, let's go to my receiver. I'm not getting anything through yet on that. So, configuration. Actually, let's have a check at my serial settings. So, get serial. Inverted, I can turn that off. So, set serial. so this would have come from my uh, F port setup. So just save that. And we have got things coming in. Awesome. So let's see if my channels are mapped correctly first. So we've got throttle, which is correct. Yaw, which is correct. Pitch, which is correct. Roll, which is correct. So I also need to set my endpoints as well. Because currently that's showing 988. So that's channel, that's it, aux1, that's aux2, let's work my way around, work out where it is. Alright, that's not working, cool. That's my beeper. Oh, I realise I've still got the smoke stopper in. <laughs> that's why it stopped in the beeper then. That's pretty cool. So where's my aux2? We have Ox2 set up. Let's double check. Flip over after crash. Yeah. Oh, I moved that over to that. Cool. So that is. Yeah, I'm going a bit daft. Cool. Ox1, Ox2. Box 3, box 4, box 5, box 6, and I don't believe I've got anything else set up on this. 
I've also got my black box as well and my pre-arm awesome so let's set up my endpoints so to do that damn that's quite a lot of data so first I'm going to rediscover my sensors and see if I get anything extra anyway yeah and then discover new so yeah we're getting a few extra things now I believe I'm not sure what the FM one is Moving that, cool. Well, I'm also curious to see sensors. is if my Lua scripts work as well, because that was one of the reasons I wanted to switch to Crossfire. So I could do things like uh, change settings on my flight controller. Way that's working. Awesome. So what I can do from here, maybe yeah, I can set up all that too. That's awesome. Yeah, so I can change all my VTX settings from here if I want to. So at the minute pit mode is on. Cool. Alright. I am happy that it works. So next step is set my channels. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, you do it on the outputs, don't you? It's got sub trim. Oh no, it's not that one. So yeah, you can see the one that's moving down here where the arrow changes when I move that stick. So what I need to do. Set the min don't I? So I want the min. So as I move that, I'll show you my screen. So as I move that scroll wheel, you can see my throttle going up to a thousand like that. So now that sets up that. And we'll also do the max, which is. 2011 so Interestingly, there seems to be a bit of a dead zone with that. So I should go back to my screen again. It's got I'm at 98.1, but if I go down to 98.0, doesn't seem to update. So those are my options. Although 98.1 is a bit of a dead zone. Right, let's put it on 98 for that for now. So 
Okay, that's at a thousand. Cool. So let's do your. So your is this one. Thousand. What it might be worth me doing is recalibrating my sticks in a sec. Yeah, so that's ninety eight as well. All right. So I'll just show you what I'm seeing on my screen. So yeah, yeah, that's what we're looking at now. So that's doing 1000 to 2001. All right, what I'll do then. So I'll just recalibrate. So calibration. I'll stick all my sticks to centre. All right. Start collaboration. Centre sticks, pots, and sliders. Let's do that as well. So that should be about centre there. Yeah, the between should go up a bit. And that. Move sticks. And move these as well. So I'm just moving these on the side. You can see how that affects that. So I've got this one up here, mapped to volume on my radio. So turn down anything I don't want to hear while I'm playing in sim. Alright, that seems... Alright, let's see if that's any better. Uh, model. That's what we're doing. Back to channel 3. I'm doing the wrong one Right, I'm still going to 1999 for the other one. Alright, just put that to 2001 for now. Let's get the yard up. Yeah, that way, and we'll do. Oh, 
MOSFET mutual. So the center point changes when you've got the throttle up a bit, but only by a couple. That's warning me that I've had it on for too long now. Yeah, I've never set the endpoints before really. But I decided to do it properly for my first for doing this. Alright. I'm gonna have to reboot it one sec, that beeping's gonna annoy me. Config. Save reboot. Right, there we Cool, that is dead center of my stick. Alright, so now let's get roll up away. That's channel one. Yeah, I've got that dead zone again on the T16. And now all we've got left is pitch. Pitch needs to go. Cool. Then. All right. I'm happy to call that close enough for now. Using up to what's my max box channel here? Just double check this so up to ten, apparently. Ten is mapped to SB, which is ox six. Well, I might be able to go down to white channel after all. Awesome. So stick that on. I'll stick the RSSI in uh, seven then. So seven. So actually, no, I can't because I've still got. Yeah, I've still got uh, my petrol urine throttle, haven't I? So I do have to use the twelve channel. That's annoying. I could probably clean up the switches, but I'll leave that for now. Uh, my brain, my mind's just gone blank. 
Oh yeah, that's what's that. So go back to configure. Oh cool. That's a surprise. What comes up with that? B wasn't it? So go on. Channel eleven. Do link quality. That's right, isn't it? So what I've just seen in Betaflight doing that is my Ox 7 just jump all the way up to 2000. I'll just double check that is correct. Alright, so coming out of that, did that. So, yeah, cool, that's correct. So now, what I can do is that link quality should hopefully go between 2000 and 1000. What I'd like to do Oh, I just realized one camera's running slow again. There we go. Just wanted to get my telemetry sorted out as well. That wrong one. We've got receiver battery. Now, what I want to know can I get average cell voltage? That's another one I'd like to have. But what I might do is just leave that for now. Time to read some documentation I think so one thing I need to work out is what other sensors I can get as part of this so need to fly to the lemma tree that's what I want 
So this should give me the telemetry for each receiver type. So we've got free sky, Optium, Mavlink, Smart Port. Alright. Yes. Actually, yeah, uh, let's read. Let's just RTFM for a bit. So, off we go. What's the contents? Telemetry, right. All right, FM is flight mode. But I'm getting an error on that at the minute. So it's got GPS configuration, battery voltage. Alright, so I think that's all I'm going to get. So, what I think I'm going to have to do instead is I prefer seeing the average cell voltage. So, say you plug a 4S in. It will tell you the voltage for each one of those cells, so that will be the lowest I'll ever want it to go down is to like 3.3 .3 volts per cell, and the max it'll be is 4.2. But at the minute, it looks like I'm only ever gonna get the actual RX voltage. Right, how do I go about setting up flight mode? That is my next question. Yeah, I'm not sure. But while I've got that on there, Ox7, let's just go back to this. We want to set this to Ox7. That is now my RSSI channel. So stick low threshold is going to be 995. Stick center is fifteen hundred. Oh, I was doing it again. Oh, no, 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 no. Saved, let's just reboot that just to shut it up. Nice. Actually, how is my battery voltage doing? Let's have a quick check. Kill it. Yeah, so we're about three sixty six a cell at the minute. So 
what I'll do is the last thing I want to do is set up my OSD and I'll put everything back together. And we should be good. So for my OSD. Oh, I've already got my RSSI in there. Cool. We have crossfire. Alright, and let's put everything back together now. And let's work out the placement of this antenna. So, unplug it. Telemetry lost. Let's just turn that off. Let's whack that on. So I'm going to get this heat shrink on this now and then remove the sticky bit and then we'll whack that in. Come on. Just looking at how much to cut off. What do you say? Give it that much. I'm going to use the Leatherman because I can't go and get any scissors. <laughs> but it is a good tool. No, what I want to know is, is if there's a more elegant solution to do this antenna. Well, should I just cut that bit out when I heat shrink it? Let's try those wires up a bit. Ideally I should use a lighter, but I'll see how it does with the edge of the soldering iron instead. Oh, looks pretty well. But I am still going to have to get the antenna in there, aren't I? Well, I have not done very well with that. I am going to have to use a lighter. But yeah, it's just melted the plastic straight through. Yeah. We'll be right back.
and I am back with fire. So let's get that antenna on and try with this slightly smaller uh, heat shrink. Because it was a bit generous with the first cut. Right, that is all heat shrunk on. Hopefully that is going to be fine. Now my only problem with this is I'll probably have to redo it if I ever want to rebind this. Must come. Put that lock on. Can get my VTX on as well. I'm going to put the solder in iron because I just realised it's still turned on. Hold on for now. Come on. One sec. I'm going to need to feed that antenna through instead. So it don't put it on. Let's go. It was awkward these nylon bolts. I'm missing this nylon bolt up here on the top, this top bit of the VTX, but I'm not too fussed about that for now. Alright, let's get this put back on the top plate.
Magnets. How do they work? Right, I'll start top plate back on. Let's stick the VTX antenna through. Which is always a bit awkward. Let's get this crossfire antenna in place. So I was thinking something like that. And it looks like it falls in nicely with that cable tie as well. So I might be cheeky and try to reuse that cable tie. And then find a way to stick this down. Maybe like uh what's that tape gone? There it is, can't see for looking. I'm thinking like that, or which side is it going to be best on? I don't think it makes much difference, does it? Just before I commit to that, let's just power it up and make sure everything's fine still. To I've not messed up a wire or something. So I'll plug this in. Yeah, and we've got telemetry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, still got telemetry coming through, which is good. Let's just double check beta flight as well. Receiver. Yeah, still happy. Nice. I'm going to put it on the opposite side of the battery connector, I think. Yeah. It will do that. I'll put it underneath that cable tie. That's my phone dropped. Let's get that hooked back up. Currently, I've got everything jerry rigged. So, the way I've done it. So I'm currently using my Android phone to do the video. 
as I mentioned before I think let's get this output and that is going into the light up there held on with some tape so it is very, it is very hacky until I get something like if I decide to do more of these I'll probably get something a bit better There we go. Alright, so what I'm going to do is try and undo that cable tie. So just lift up the little latch. Gonna put some pressure on it at the same time. I've got it, yay. Use that as like a cable guide, and I could probably do with another cable tie as well. What I'll also do is use this foam. Ooh, just feels uneasy resting that on the antenna. Let's take the VTX antenna out. now Alright, and I might put another cable tie around that. Maybe top to side if I can. But I've only got the thicker cable ties. I'll be right back.
Right, so I have cable tie. So I'm thinking of doing it like that. This might be overkill, but we'll see. Alright, and that is how that's ended up mounted, and that feels very secure. And it's not actually resting against the floor too much either. Cool. Plug it in, see what happens, and arm it with our smooth stopper. There. Low battery. Right, beepers are working. So that should be my pre-arm. That should be my arm. Alright, so it isn't arming right now. I'm guessing that's got something to do with my set points or something like that. Let's just plug that in. Maybe he thinks my throttle is up right now. Yep, throttle. Hmm. Set up again. So yeah, no throttle, no prearm. Yeah, this is where I'm looking. Throttle channel is too high. What I could do is, hate to do it, against uh, Badwell's advice on his video, remove those uh, set points. Probably I've missed something out. So I've reset all my set points again. And now it's doing something else. Yeah, MSP isn't it? It's me being daft now. So yeah, that would now arm. Cool. 
and let's test that. I just realised I can reboot it from a transmitter now. So switch back to Alright, awesome. And I can also do crash flip. Alright, awesome. And luckily, I just realised I powered up my quad without putting the VTX antenna on. But luckily, I've got PinIO set up on it, so it would have powered on for like a second. Probably less. Alright, let's plug it in before I do any more damage. I'm sure I'll get guilty of doing that. Low no battery. No battery. Alright, what I'm going to do is just double check my goggles, make sure all of that's fine. Let's grab my goggle batteries. I am back and I have got my goggle battery. I really need some new foam. This one's falling off now. Like I did order some, but uh, the warehouse labelled it wrong, so they labelled the HDO2 foam as the ultimate pack. So now I need to find it somewhere else because everyone's out of stock now. Right, that's my goggles. Let's turn them on. Still have a quick look through them. Awesome. We have power. So now I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this. Let's see if I can get this about right. Hopefully. Come on. So you can just about see the camera there. So I'll turn it around. See the laptop screen over there. It's all a bit upside down at the minute. Yeah, all that's working. Smashing. We have crossfire. Awesome. I am looking very much forward to flying that. Telemetry lost. Telemetry lost. Alright, let's just get all the props back on and we should be good. So I'm using the Lemon Limes, the Mr. Steel ones. So they're the 
lemon limes, I think the S5s or something like that. Let's just have a quick look. Come on. Oh, and I've done it again. There you go. Control key. Silly me. Limon. Where's the S4? Yeah, so those are the props that I've got. And they fly very nicely. So I originally tried the watermelons and they were nice too. But I've not been flying long enough to feel what the difference is between them. So props go in, yeah, just put that one on there. That one on there. Prop tool. One thing I do have to say is with the antenna being there, it does make getting leverage on the prop a bit harder. But I'm still pretty happy with it. On spinning in, spinning in, spinning into the center, into the center. Are we hitting anything? No, we are not. Oh, it looks so much nicer without the antenna poking out the top now as well. But yeah, that is crossfire done by an absolute noob. <laughs> so, I hope you've all enjoyed this stream. Um, if you think I should do more in the future, um, let me know, leave a comment, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'm going to end it there. Thanks everyone for watching. <laughs>